Big baggy down there? No, I don't. Can you hold her up? She this would be like a good way to start. Oh, she doesn't like it? I don't hey, Call her over or something. Want to be on a video? Want to be on a video? Look. You're going to be famous. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're going to be a famous cat. This is great content. <laughs> She's squirmy. She doesn't like to be picked up, but she is a lap cat now. Not, but she has to come to you? Yeah. Yeah. But she didn't let anybody touch her at first. Now she's like a total sap. Nice. She loves sitting on my lap, taking a nap. So it's our awesome. first video in like a million years. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> Since you became I a think... rock star and you don't have time to do this stuff anymore. Yeah, well, I guess that's a good plug. Uh, come hear me, Milwaukee people. I'm playing gigs like all the time with uh with the uh, great musicians um, yeah and i got two new albums out yeah almost out voltage unit is is out mm -hmm. actually the the official uh release date is january 15th which is like next week right or the week uh, after. yeah a week from sunday the live album should be out by the end of the month I think the official Excellent. date on that is first week in February. You're on nice. it. Yep. And you can, uh, if you guys are interested, you can check out the videos from that session on the Paramount Guitars page. Yeah, and yeah. the new uh, record company is launched, Little Maggie yep. Records. Mm -hmm. Littlemaggie.com. Yeah. There's Little Maggie. She's Now she's going to play with her toys. Here, spinning nice. the ball around. <laughs> no, I think Zoom is uh, like editing it out. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. She's playing with her toys. Nice. So we, today we're gonna do uh, our best pickups of 2022, right? Yep. Which mine are yeah. are not in any particular order. And me, yeah, me neither. New stuff and new stuff. Yeah. What kind of speakers do you have back there? These are I. Uh, I don't even know what they're called. They're they were my grandpa's. Um, yeah. But they're I think they're. Yeah, I don't know, but they they work nice. I can here. I can see what they I think they're. Uh, ADS. Don't know anything I, about them. I looked. I looked them up when I got them. I couldn't find much information on them, but yeah, they sound they sound pretty nice. Cool. Yeah. So, who's gonna start? Uh, can I start? Yeah. Cool. All right. This is a. This was a very cool find. This was one that I was like, ah, I'm probably never gonna run into this, and some random Milwaukee record store, which I could remember which one it was. Um, found it and uh this was right when i was going through if you've been keeping up with our videos you, people you know i'm a big dave liebman fan and uh he's got a lot of great solo records but kind of the really the one that really put him on the map in the early days um besides on the corner with miles was this one take it out of the elvin jones live at the lighthouse Open this up so Ooh. you can see the full. Yeah. And um I don't actually own that one. It's kind of a I haven't seen it anywhere else. Like I was surprised to find it. Um, but it's one of those later, well not later. Well, I guess you would say later. Later, it's a blue note record. And it's got um the lineup is uh Elvin Jones, obviously, Gene Perla, and then Dave Liebman and uh Steve Grossman, who were kind of Two of the really early adapters of Coltrane's um, very angular uh, sheets of sound kind of thing. So they were students of that. And um, so it's like having two young versions of Coltrane like battling each other uh, and no um, rhythmic accompaniment. It's just them just blowing their brains out nonstop. So it's, uh, it's very shreddy. 
Uh, but if you're into that kind of thing, it's sometimes well, I'm really in the mood for it. Everything with Alvin Jones is shreddy. Yeah. Like I buy um, anything that he's on just because I know it's going to be like solid, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so this is one of them. Um, yeah, it's a cool record. Very fun to listen to. Cool. This yeah. is actually a new uh, record this year. Okay. And uh, I really like it. Uh, Cecil McLaurin Sylvain. Yeah. The ghost song. And it's it's a just a crazy record. Check out that art. Yeah. Yeah, she's a really interesting vocalist, and I've got some of her older stuff, and I really liked her older stuff, but I think she stretches a little more on this. Have you heard yeah. this? Yeah. It's it yeah, runs it's like gamut from experimental to almost gospely blues kind of stuff. Yeah, and some like and musical theatery sort of things and kinda like yeah. old style. She's, yeah. She's she's a really interesting vocalist. She really pushes, you know, the the lines and yeah. um really good band. Um this one is the the label. I don't even know what the label is. Oh, it's non such that put this out. So nice. They're kind of a um modern classical slash jazz you know kind of fusiony world fusion yeah. label i guess yeah but i really they're like one the, this clearly one of the coolest yeah it's it takes some serious uh concentration to understand it at first you know mm. but once you kind of once you let your guard down and you get past you know the bizarreness of it it's yeah. pretty cool nice. so I think it's one of the best releases of last year. I'm yeah, I'm glad you brought that one up. That one's really good. <clears throat> Here, I'll I'll pull out a new one too. I think I have two. Um this first one <coughs> is from if you see the poster behind me over there, that's from uh when uh Julian Lodge came to Madison and did a, a master class and a concert um on tour promoting his new record, which is View with the Room. Which has yeah, a really killer lineup. At, at yeah. And this has uh so it's Julian, Bill Frizzell, I think is on at least one or he's on one or two tracks on here, and Jorge Roder and Dave King from the Bad Plus. Uh which Hold is on a a minute. really yeah. Hey, Maggie wants to go sit in the bedroom. Should I keep talking? All right. <laughs> um <laughs> And he's had a couple, I think he, he had another trio before this. Um, but this one is really nice. If you look up some live videos of them playing, him and Dave King have this incredible bromance going on. Like they never break eye contact the whole gig. Really? And, uh, yeah. And it was like, it didn't feel, I really loved it because it didn't feel like a jazz concert. Everybody was standing up by the stage and like totally paying attention to everything that was going on. It was a very like, engaged experience and uh for those of you who have or haven't listened to julian lodge it's he's a jazz kind of prodigy but his music has a lot of americana and country some some bluegrass influence um blues kind of bill, bill frizzell like a modern yeah bill frizzell yeah he, he's kind of in that vein um and so this this one some of the there's one or two compositions on here that that didn't really do it for me. Mainly, I like the way he um, interprets other other people's music. Um, but I I really love his aesthetic, and uh, yeah. So this is and this is also on Blue Note. Cool. Mm -hmm. So this one's got an interesting story. I actually just got this last um, month. This lady called and she said, "I want to give you some records." And I said, well, we buy records. And she said, well, I want to just give these to you because I want somebody who, you know, appreciates them to have them and listen to them. And I thought, oh, man, this is going to be like a a box of Herb Alpert records or, you know, yeah. Lawrence Welk records. So she showed up and a half of these people had call me and say stuff like this never even show up, you know, so... Hmm. 
it was right around Christmas and she showed up, she had her little bag or her little tote bag. And she said, I have these records for you. And I said, okay, let's see what you got. Hey, you know, if it's not stuff I can use, I'll send you up to St. Vinny's and you can drop them off. And she pulls out, you know, about 25 records. And on the top of the stack was this. Whoa. Am I getting glare? It's yeah, there's no yeah, I can see myself. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. it's a it's a shiny cover. It wait, does it have plastic on it or is that just the cover? No, no, it's shiny like like an like a European cover, but mm -hmm. I can't find any evidence that it's a European pressing. Hmm. Which is weird. It's got the old Volt label. So this was Otis Redding's first. Actually, it doesn't. It's it's got the Volt label on the rec on the cover, but it's got an Atco label on the hmm. record. And um, so it sort of seems like it might be a European pressing of some sort, but there's no markings anywhere. It's a heavy, like one eighty gram. You know, obviously from the day. You know, I think this came out in like 68. But man, what a great record. As far as solo I haven't records heard that go, one. This, this is a rocking record. Mm. I'm going to listen to that today. And I didn't have it, you know? Yeah, it's wow. got stuff stuff on here like Chain Gang, you know, the Sam Cooke thing. Yeah. Nobody knows when you're down and out. It's, six three four five seven eight nine you know just classic soul stuff so she gave this to me it's in mint condition there was two otis redding records in there and a janice joplin record and the rest of it was all kind of throw away mm -hmm. but it was like the best christmas present ever that's amazing <laughs> yeah so awesome it's kind of like you know, a, a bunch of years ago when this lady opened the front door and pushed a box of records in the store and said, I want to give these to you. And she left. And I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. So it was a lot of Herb Alpert kind of stuff. And I'm digging yeah. through and I get to the last two records. And they were Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys, a perfect stereo copy, and Sergeant Pepper like an unplayed first pressing. Whoa. Yeah. Isn't that bizarre? That's like that's the that's the uh the crazy thing about your life, man, about your your business is you get to have those sorts of uh things. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to totally shift gears here. This was uh this was a real uh this was very exciting for me, but it was sad. Because this is, uh, I found this, I think at the same rec place I found uh, the Lighthouse record. Um, and this is Bartok, um, six string quartets of volume three. So it's got quartet number five and number six. Uh, and played by the, the Juilliard String Quartet uh, and it's on, on Columbia. So this is like. I love those guys. Yeah, this is like this. And this is, I I, I think I heard, heard about these through reading um, Mingus's autobiography which is um i don't know if i would say i would recommend actually it was his, his birthday yesterday it's a lot of it's pretty pornographic and a lot of the stuff you're reading you're like there's no way that this happened but it's pretty traumatic because it probably and traumatic happen. and it's or also could be yeah so have you seen the documentary yeah where he fires <laughs> off a 12 gauge shotgun in his apartment in new york yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, they kicked it. They kicked him out of his apartment. Well, because he was I, he was like you know shooting guns in his apartment yeah. in New York, you know. Yeah. Um. But so he spent some time and at the Camarillo Sanatorium, I think you'd call it. I don't, um. And I this I think he was listening to this while he was there, and um. I could talk for hours on Bartok because Bart like Bartok, he's a 20th century composer, very advanced like next level harmonic stuff, but there's a really powerful humanity in his music that really uh, touches me. 
and uh, then this particular these particular recordings are really great. But I, I bought this for three dollars, and it's like mint. But that's that's what classical music tends to be going for these days on vinyl, like used well, classical Well, some. Music. I mean, yeah. the stuff that every everybody wants goes for a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I picked up a lot of cool classical music this year, and we probably should do like a classical video at some point because I got yeah. some really killer stuff. Mm. So this is another new release, the Gabbard mm. Brothers. It's on Karma Chief, which is um, a coal mine, you know, subsidiary, which is like okay. my favorite label. And um, <laughs> check the check out the inside of this man. This is great. Nice, great cover. Like all the coal mine stuff, you know, these guys do r really nice, you know, heavy cover, heavy pressing. They always give you a really nice, you know mofi sleeve you know great stuff but this is kind of i guess kind of birds oriented stuff you really know? okay got that kind of kind of kind of country -ish, hey. country rock like, vibe really like great album, up. man every time i uh every time i play this in the store people like wander up to the counter and go who's that you know mm. one of those Nice. I love all the Sweet. coal mine stuff. Coal mine is a great label. Mm. And um, yeah, these guys, I don't know much about them, but just cool vibe, you know, Americana, rootsy. Sweet. You would like it. Yeah, I I just I just queued it up on my phone for later today. Um all right, next up, this is a guy we've talked about. You may have shown this record for yourself, but I found this uh um, I went to visit a friend of mine in Michigan, uh, in, in our, in Arbor and, uh, I found an unbelievable record shop there and, uh, just, just had all the, it was tough Which to one? leave, man. I don't know. It was, it was like kind of in the downtown area. There was one that was like really lame. And then there was one I showed up, they had on the corner playing and it was like every record you pulled back was like, ah. Oh, Oh no! Ah, oh, like it's just all the good ones. So this was one yeah. of them. Uh, Egberto Gismani. Oh yeah, and, that's a uh, great one. This is a really cool record. It's Love um, that. yeah, it's um, I can't remember what the uh, theme is. I think it's on uh, dancing music. Um, a trip through Brazilian rhythms, musical forms, and popular festivals. Um, so he, he's using all these traditional forms to that write his original compositions over for the first record. It's a double record set. And then the second record is him playing solo guitar and solo sanfona, which is man, his solo guitar playing is pretty terrifying because it it's sounds amazing. like four guys. Yeah. So this is, this is really good. I, I like pretty much everything he does, but this one in particular is, is really cool. Yeah, I love I love his yeah. stuff. He's great. And it's ECM too. Yeah. Do you know that? He's he's it, his, awesome. It, he's an awesome pianist. Yeah, and he I think the 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 group stuff is he's mostly playing piano and then he plays mostly guitar for the solo stuff on here. Yeah. So this came in in a collection I bought this year. This is like nice. One of those just mind-boggling records. This is a mono, original first pressing mono of this record which yeah. you never see and it it's so different from the stereo version like a lot of this oh. early stuff i'm pretty sure they did designated mixes for the mono release you know that were just totally different but uh or maybe it was mixed in mono because it was right about that time you know mid 60s um, but man, if you haven't heard the mono version of this, just Ooh. amazing three dimensional, you know, really, really animated sounding, um, really has a lot more life, I think, than the stereo, the stereo stuff at that time was kind of almost a lot of it was simulated stereo. Hmm. So 
Yeah, the the um number on this is LPM thirty seven sixty six. So, and I think the stereo ones have a little stereo insignia. But try to find this. Try to find the model yeah. for this. This is a great I'll, I'll, record, keep man. Keep a look out for it. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it tonight I'm better. I'm, I'm getting together it, with <clears throat> to hear like White Rabbit, you know. And yeah. somebody to love in mono is is a mind altering experience. It really is. It's nice. life changing. Yeah. Tonight I'm I got a I'm getting together with some musician friends and we're gonna watch a serious man, the Coen Brothers movie. Oh, it's a great movie. Yeah, and that's got a lot of Jefferson Airplane in it. Like they're kind of the uh yeah. theme for the for the, the movie. All right, another big change of pace. And another, uh, I think this is also ECM. Yeah, another ECM record. And a promo copy also. Oh, yeah. Is, uh, Shankar. Shankar. Yeah. Uh, and it's a solo record. Great record. It's, it's got Zakir Hussein and uh, two other cats who are really great players, but I, I don't know if I've heard them elsewhere. And I'm, I'm going to show their names, but I'm not going to butcher them on, uh, on this video. Um, and uh, it's... Uh, Shankar, um, as I'm sure a lot of you know, was the violin player for Shakti, and uh, did like you know did a lot of stuff on ECM. Uh, dedicated this record to John McLaughlin. And I think uh, one of those other guys might have been might have played with Shakti at one. Well, point. Zakir, Zakir did, yeah, and I'm sure no, the, I mean, yeah, one of the, the other one of the other guys that you couldn't pronounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and again, I'm I'm really sorry. I should have prepped on this and practiced it because. They deserve to be mentioned in this video, but um, and this and on re this record, he's playing this double violin, which I'm not really sure. I need to watch some videos of it to really see what the what the purpose of it is. But this dude, different tunings, has, I believe. Okay, yeah, this dude has chops that are. This is also another fairly shreddy record. Uh, his chops are just outrageous. I found this one in um, at. Uh, Ah, oh, that record shop in Chicago. What is it? Um, is it on here? Rec I think Reckless Records. Um, and that's a cool place to go because the turnover rate in that store is is quick. So every time you go, it's a whole different landscape of records. It's a very populated area. Yeah. So I'm going to show another uh, new one that I've been waiting for for a long time. Yeah. Me and Dad. This yeah. is a little rootsier than any of the other stuff he's done. And man, it's great. He's got Del McCory's uh sons, you know, are on this, and Jerry mm -hmm. Douglas is on this. Yeah. Just killer ripping traditional bluegrass. Everything you would expect from Billy yeah. Strings. I've never yeah. heard anything by him I didn't love. Yeah. Oh, so I'm digging this one a lot. Dude, Dude is on off. fire, man. Yeah, he's this is he's, his day. Uh, Single-handedly revived the bluegrass scene. Yeah. You know? It's a great thing. I don't know. I don't know if you would say single-handedly, but he's done more than his fair share of the heavy lifting in terms of well getting people interested. Somebody in else it. who's made a dent like he's made well, in the last Molly Tuttle, Sierra Hall. Yeah. You know, um, but but and, she uh, isn't she isn't selling out. Um, you know, huge cost. Right. Well, he's got the jam. He's got the jam. He's scene got the on great his side. bed crowd. Honestly, yeah, yeah, coming to his shows, man. It's right. all the all the the hippie kids that used to go to fish shows and Grateful Dead shows are now going to Billy String shows. Yeah, and rightfully so because the guy's got a massive repertoire. His band is like the best band ever. I mean, those yeah. guys are just they're just unbelievable you know yeah. and um you know they, they they'll play anything i've seen those guys play pink floyd songs i've seen them play anything and everything you never know what they're gonna come up with yeah. and, it and i've heard that night. i've heard he's got a heck of a light show going too and well and his sound guys are just unreal mm -hmm. i mean you know his sound his live sound is is crazy good. I gotta go Better hear him. anything out there, you know. Wow, yeah. All right, 
I got another new one. I don't know if this came out this year. Let's see what year did this come out. Oh yeah, 2022. This is uh, this was a, a gift from a, a friend of mine, uh, Gerald Clayton, who is the son of John Clayton, and uh, Bells on Sand, also Blue Note. I got a lot of Blue Note picks, and uh, Joe Clayton. He's uh, he's a, like a modern jazz pianist, and most of his stuff is. Um, I would just characterize it by saying it's like, you know, modern jazz sounding, um, you know, fairly intricate, um, you know, big drums, high energy stuff. And this record is kind of a departure. I think he recorded it during the pandemic. <clears throat> and it's very like the album cover is a pretty good representation of what the music on here is like. It's a little more subdued. There's some more, I don't know, neo soul elements to it and uh it's a gentler kind of spacier record i do my tai chi to it a lot uh and charles lloyd is on here and uh justin brown as well um, and it's just really nice uh beautiful um heartfelt music i like this one a lot cool yeah don't know it yeah yeah i didn't know i didn't know it either so um January 1st of last year, I drove to uh, Madison and an old friend of mine decided he was going to sell his record collection. And I had sold to him all of these audio file records over the years. And uh, it was a pretty astounding collection. We call it the Less Collection. And um, I picked up a couple of things from that collection and... This is a, a first pressing classic records edition of this sure. record, the 180 gram, which are considered the best of all the <clears throat> classic records. If you're not familiar with that company, man, they did all analog versions of classic records like this and just killed it. It's some of the best mm. stuff ever. So I was able to pick up a mint condition copy of this on classic records and it's one of my favorite records so i'm going to show another another one or two from that collection too nice it was quite a feeding frenzy you know we had guys <laughs> i had people call me from california like a week later and i didn't even advertise any of this stuff it was crazy yeah. sweet I'm going to follow in that uh, same folk vein. <laughs> I know I'm late to the party on this, but I just got into Joan Baez this year um, in a very big way. And so I, when, um, I went to the exclusive company, which is no longer the exclusive company. Um, and they have, but yeah. the, a lot of the, um, and it's the one by like the, I think there's a, are there, is there a couple exclusive companies? Uh, there was like, there were, I think there was like eight or nine of them left, and they all went under yeah. last year. Yeah. So the one by the conservatory, it's. I mean, if you go to that building, it's the same place, and there, there's like the two dollar bins on the bottom. None of that moved, and uh, so they had a whole bunch of them. And I remembered that they had been there. Oh, we're gonna have to end the meeting in ten minutes, and maybe have to restart it um, as a Zoom. Uh, Why is that? You only get 40 minutes on uh, Zoom. So we may, just so you all folks, well, they, they're they going to see an edited video. They don't even need to worry about this. Um, so anyway, so I got um, got this one, which is, I think, her first record. <clears throat> and I don't, I think it's mostly, I don't know if there's any originals. It's mostly um, her just doing the She didn't really do originals. I don't well, that's think. true. She didn't. She she wrote a couple later, but she's known for you know. Yeah. So, so Silver Silver Daggers, the really famous one. She did Wildwood Flower, John Riley, um, and man, her obviously her singing is like outstanding, but her guitar playing too is like pretty fierce. Yeah. Um, and I don't I don't know if people talk about her as a guitar player enough. I know there's an interview with, with Dylan where he was kind of. Um, talking about how much he admired her playing but um and she yeah she's just got that um kind of fire and brimstone gravitas that you want when you're listening to old folk music but she did it 
There we go. So last year, uh, yeah, I went to visit a old friend of mine, uh, Herb Keeneman, who was a chiropractor in Milwaukee. And um, mm. last time I saw him, he gave me this. He said, I want you wow. to have my copy of this. He's like, this is from the day. He's like, I loved this record. And he yeah. died. I just found out he died a couple of months oh, later. Oh, wow. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. So that was that was kind of cool. I, I'll yeah. treasure that. Yeah, that Still record. Sitting is... out, I never never put it away, you know? Yeah. And I think she recorded that, like, in an auditorium with just some mic set up and everything was, like, first takes. Incredible record. <clears throat> Incredible record. So this is a weird one. You're gonna you, okay. you're not gonna expect this from me. An original version of the Jesus and Mary Chain Psycho Candy. I don't know anything about this. I think these guys are considered like shoegaze or, or oh you know, okay. Kind of really noisy psychedelic kind of stuff. Oh you know? far out. Okay. It's a cool record. I've always liked the record, and I had a reissue, and I was able to pick up a mint original one. And it's just, it's it's one of those uh, records where, you know, it sounds like there's an industrial machine on for the entire record. <laughs> it's just a nice. lot of like, a lot of background noise, and it's cool though. You know, really uh, kind of got an experimental vibe to it, and. Um, these guys were kind of a cool band. You don't hear much about them anymore, but oh. this is kind of a valuable record, I think. You know, not a lot of original ones around. Uh, uh, shoot. Where are you? There's one. I was going to change my uh, one of my picks. But I might, uh, I don't know if I know where the one I was going to. The video is going to be up soon. Yeah, we got six minutes left. So okay. uh, Jack, one of my other one of my other teachers who you introduced me to, is uh, starting to downsize his collection and uh, giving me a bunch of just random, a lot of stuff I haven't heard of or stuff that I w wasn't listening to. But the one thing that, that like really got me hyped um, I mean, and, and it's which is great because it's a lot of stuff that I I wouldn't be listening to otherwise, and so it's a a great education. But the one thing that I saw that I was like, oh my gosh, was uh, this guy. This is Coltrane at the Village Vanguard, and another one was like was like outtakes or not outtakes, but more recordings that just did, weren't on this record. Um, and this is uh, the Coltrane Quartet, you know, at their at well, I don't know. They peaked the whole time. I think the Coltrane Quartet was just like one big peak, in my in my opinion. But this is at their most iconic. So it's like, I think it's, I don't know if it's before or after Love Supreme. I think it might be before. But they're starting to stretch a little bit, and, and Elvin is playing really loud, and Coltrane's playing some crazy shit. Is McCoy Tanner on there? Yeah. And yeah. uh, and then uh, Eric Dolphy's on one of the tracks. You know, you guys know you guys know who Coltrane is. I don't need to I don't need to hype up Coltrane. Um, but this was this was a very cool. And then you know, like you were just showing me that the, the the Joan Baez record when it's from someone you care about and it's like this cool of a record and you're listening to the same grooves that they were listening to. It's a it's a very special experience. Yeah, yeah. So. This is another uh, new record, but it's a reissue, obviously. Clifford Brown and Max Roach. Ooh. Studying Brown. This is on the Analog Productions. It's kind of... <laughs> there. Yeah. It's, this is from the Analog Productions. Uh, Maggie's getting in trouble over here. Maggie, get out of there. Come on. Come back over here. Here? <laughs> um, no i don't this is from the analog productions uh series they're they're doing like a verve and this is actually mrc mrc was the original label but man this is such a great record clifford brown is just amazing 
they do these with really really heavy stout and mm. covers and you know really nice probably a I think it's either 180 or 200 gram pressing, but man, if you like Clifford Brown, or even if you want to get into Clifford Brown, this is a killer record. Mm. Great stuff. Sweet. I'm going to, uh, before we go to the next one, I'm going to shut this thing down and start up a new thing. So we don't get cut off halfway through. So we'll okay. be back with you shortly after this commercial break. All right, we're back, people. Um, all right, I think we got two more records each, right? Yep. All right, so next one, this was a cool I got a whole bunch of Blue Note today. Good good heavens. Um, this is another one that I was looking for a long time, and it was at a record shop, I think called Musical Memories or something in Milwaukee, and I'd been looking at it a long time. It was a little, it was was 35 which is a lot more than i would normally pay for a used record but at a certain point i'm like no i need to get this record and it's uh supernova by wayne shorter uh this is uh kind of i would say third third phase wayne shorter so he had kind of his early hard bop thing and then the sort of era when he was in miles's group and he was making records on his own like you know what i have behind me um, speak no evil and that sort of thing. And this is sort of fusion, fusion free jazz. Uh, it was around the time of Bitches Brew. I don't know if he had started Weather Report yet, um, but this got some heavy hitters on here. There's um, let's see if it says yeah. So Wayne Shorter, John McLaughlin, Sonny Chirac, Walter Booker, Miroslav Vitus, Jack Dijonette, Chick Career, Ayrton Muera, and uh, Maria Booker. And so a good oh, chunk Walter of it is Booker. Yeah, and he's just on Great. one. Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy record because there's like, eighty percent of the record is just like pandemonium, really crazy, you know, rough around the edges kind of, free jazz fusion, and then uh, there's this beautiful little section in the middle where uh, Maria Booker and Walter Booker play Gingy by uh, I think Joe Joe Beam wrote that one, and it's gorgeous. And then they come in. That whole band comes in after that with this super ruckusy samba, but but like if you put samba through a distortion pedal, uh, so this is a really cool. I mean, Wayne's got so many cool records, and uh, I was almost gonna show the uh, All Seeing Eye one that I that I got this year too. That that, really that, that record scares me. All Seeing Eye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a fire and brimstone record, dude. That that's a that's a frightening record. Yeah. Like you better be ready to, you know, to yeah. uh, absorb some some serious vibes if you listen yeah. to that man. Not it's background like, music. First time I listened to it, I wasn't ready for it. It was just like, yeah. whoa, I'm scared. Yeah. So the last two records I'm going to show are from the Lust collection. Okay. So these are records that I got from that collection. They're they're both Dead Mint. Um, this is original. Mofi version mm. of Exodus by Bob Marley, which, in my opinion, is the perfect Bob Marley record. You know, it's got all of my mm -hmm. favorite Bob Marley songs. Jammin', Three Little Birds is on here, Natural Natural Music, um, One Love. It's like, this is like the best reggae record ever yeah. right here. Some primo stuff. And yeah. to have... A first edition MoFi version of this. This this just rocks. So nice. Yeah. Great record, man. This, this is from the old, you know, original MoFi stuff that truly was analog, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I guess we haven't made a video since that whole uh scandal. <laughs> no. Um, it got a little weird. Yeah. This year. All right. Speaking of, uh, or I said uh, what Joan Baez being late to the party. Uh, this was really the year when I got heavy into Tony Rice. And uh, and I was over there for something, and you were like, you got to pick up these Tony Rice records. And uh, I, had, I got another one, Acoustics, which I, which I like, which is cool. 
But this one for me, man, this is like might be my favorite record of all time. And Zanita. Yeah. yeah. It's a good one. Incredible. And he's got uh yeah, so it's Tony Rice, he's got Jerry Douglas, Todd Phillips, Sam Bush, Ricky Skaggs is singing some vocals on here. Um uh uh Daryl Anger Ang Anger, who I, I don't know what other stuff he's been on. Grisman is on a couple tracks on here. Um Daryl Daryl Anger's on a lot of stuff. He was on Wynnum Hill okay. too. Okay, I gotta I gotta dig more into him then. Um kind of new grass. Like, okay, yeah. For me, this is like this is has everything that I would want out of a bluegrass record, man. It's got the classic tunes with really um like down home but very poetic lyrics and the harmonies are just insanely good and tony's singing is just impeccable and uh and the way they play man it's like they're just breathing as a unit and it's uh it's incredible and so this has been like it's a comfort record it's like a record i listen to if i just want to feel good and it's also been like a textbook for me uh learning uh you know the grass guitar so Man, this record is something else. So I was right when I told you to buy it. Yeah, do you want? Do you do I need to sign a uh, sign a uh, a document saying Ken Fox was correct in recommending well, usually, that I usually when I tell you to buy something, yeah. you really need to buy it. I mean, yeah, those records don't come up. Those Tony no. Rice records, they do not come up ever. Yeah, you know, yeah. so. That was a good opportunity, I thought, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So my last uh pick, another one from the last collection. You've heard this. What? It's, uh Alan Parsons. Oh. Tales of Mystery and Imagination, Edgar Allan Poe. We we listened to this right after I got it. Yeah. That's shiny. Um a startling just amazing record especially the mofi version like this you know again this is an early mofi um this one is actually a 200 gram numbered edition you know kind of the middle period mofi stuff hmm. and man i i paid up for this you know this is one of those records like it does not come cheap but it's worth every penny nice so yeah so it, it was a big year for audiophile stuff for me yeah excellent a lot of audiophile stuff that i never thought i would see sweet yeah all right well those are our picks everybody um i got an honorable mention okay let me just do a quick honorable mention yeah um this year, there's there was some uh, XDC reissues that came out that I I don't think were previously out on vinyl, and man, they did a great job. I think XDC is doing their own reissues. This one's called Apple Venus, just okay. a phenomenal pop rock record. And um, there's another one called Warp Star that they put out. Great reissues. Very cool. high quality, just killer music, you know. So if you're into XDC, pick mm. these up, man. They're doing all their their old records, like they're all coming out now, and they're all audio file versions. So awesome, yeah, sweet. So uh, of course, as we close this video, we got to let the viewers know if uh, you're seeing some of these records and you're thinking, man. I didn't I get a lot of cool records last year. I gotta go get some more cool records. Or if you did get cool records and you want to get more cool records, what's one place they could go where they're guaranteed to find some uh, some good picks? Paramount Record Shop, where where you you basically have to have a guide to get into the shop these days because there, there's <laughs> so much stuff. <laughs> you know, go take like some path. of that shit home. There's a path. You know that that gets you in, and you may never get out. Yeah. yeah, there's there's boxes of stuff everywhere, and yeah, we just keep buying stuff, and we'll we'll keep buying stuff till they drag me out feet first. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and actually, yeah. I'm 
considering uh, maybe expanding my my uh, space a bit so that we can buy even more stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So uh, we'll have the uh, hour listed here on the screen. Uh, and yeah, go go check it out if you need to get some late holiday presents or uh, you just need some more music in your life. Every time I go there, there's cool stuff. Uh, yeah. So yeah, happy new year, everybody. Thank you for joining happy us. Happy new year. Yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for ch checking out some records with us, and we will see you next time.